good morning and um, welcome to the half year results uh, presentation. Um, as usual, I have just one slide, um, but I would like to um, just quickly talk through some of the points on this and um, you know, the, to highlight some of the issues. I know when uh, uh, we go around with some of the analysts and uh, on the road shows, um, we get a sort of a, a different flavour of the way that uh, that we think, and uh, some of the comments and feedback that we get is is that uh, you know the sort of the overview of the business uh, is sometimes missed, um, and you know what I'd like to talk about is is, is with some of these key issues, and one of the first thing is obviously the financial strength of the business, and you know when when I stand up here and say that uh, you know we. We're financially strong. We have good balance sheets. Um, I really do mean it. And you know what? What we are very fortunate. Um, when you look at our business, um, we we have very very strong assets. And you know our strategy um, going forward um, has been, you know, to to look at the key assets, to get involved in key exploration, and to farm them down at the appropriate time. And you know. The good assets, the big assets like 10 in countries like Ghana, which are good, stable countries, are, are, are very rare assets. And you know, to farm down these assets and get um, carried interest is not an issue. It's not a problem. There's queues of companies to do it. The, the issue is value. Um, and so we don't see this as an issue. We don't see this as a problem. Um, in, in places like... Um, Uganda, Kenya, which we talk about a lot in the presentation. Um, the main issues here is when we got involved in these areas, they were pretty remote. There was no infrastructure, there was no pipelines, um, and we were looking at, at finding oil and gas in pretty remote parts of the planet. Um, as we have explored there and moved them into quite large quantities, you know, and places like uh, Kenya, Uganda, and Ethiopia, the acreage acquisition there was, and was like starting off in the North Sea. But right now, because of the commerciality of these areas, you know, the infrastructure, the pipelines, all that sort of stuff is going to be built, not by us, but by other companies. And there are a lot of companies out there who are very keen to go in and build the infrastructure and finance them. So a lot of these midstream and downstream parts of the business are easily financed. What we're looking at doing is concentrating on our part of the business, which is finding oil. Well, finding oil is what we have been particularly good at doing. You know, and we find oil and we open up new basins by being a bit bold and going out and drilling wildcat wells in far flung places and hopefully proving up new basins. And we don't expect those wells to come in every year. We don't expect every well to be a success. But what we do hope is that every three or four years we'll have one new basin opening well. And if we do get a basin opening well, we generally have a large acreage position. And when we have a large acreage position, it means that we have four or five years of low-risk exploration where we can meet our target of adding 200 million barrels of oil a year on a, on a low-risk basin. And we've achieved that very successfully for the last five years. And if you look forward today, and one of the teams of, of the presentation, we say, can we achieve that for the next five years? And we're pretty confident with the acreage we have and the positions that we have in low-risk areas now that we will also achieve that. The other aspect to it is when we highlighted in our presentations and in, in the strategy last, last year was um, an exploration-led strategy. An exploration-led strategy is not just about exploring. It's also about finding oil and developing it and keeping early oil fields. So we're looking at fresh new oil fields that can replace the production on an annualized basis. 
and we produce around three, uh, 30 million barrels of oil in a year, but we replace that from our existing fields. And we've done that very successfully for the last few years. And if you look at the new fields that we bring on stream, they've all got a lot of upside um, potential in them. So this is our, our core assets, and we view these pretty much as like going concerns. You look at, uh, at Gabon, Equatorial Guinea, all of those areas have been pretty flat for a long time. We're pretty confident that Ghana would be pretty flat for a long time. Uganda would be pretty flat for a long time. Kenya would be pretty flat for a long time. So these are core assets and core areas, very strong production, and they're generating a lot of revenue and a lot of value on an annualized basis. The fields that are, that are getting uh, more mature, we will sell on, and we started a process of doing that, and we hope to have their, their results of the sales process this year. We've already got deals done on, on Bangladesh. We're talking to companies now in Pakistan, the UK, and, and the Dutch assets. So we've been high grading our assets um, uh, very um, successfully. So I think the company today is in great shape. Um, you know, we have a very strong financial position. We are not at all stressed in, in looking at our assets. There is no pressure on us to move any assets faster than we feel comfortable with. We are looking at maximizing the value of each of those assets. Um, but one of the key aspects that you'll see in the presentation, and one of the things that we want to get across is, and I think, you know, it's not just the analyst community or the investment community, but I think the oil industry in general right now does not appreciate, um, and but they soon will, how important the East African Rift Basin oil industry is going to become. You know, we've had uh, great success in finding oil in Uganda, um, and now we've had three wells in a row in Kenya. And, you know, what we'll start to give you a flavor through Angus is how important we see Kenya becoming. Um, we've also uh, found oil in Ethiopia. So we believe that that sort of area is going to become a major, a major oil province. And Tolo dominates that whole area. Um, so we see this as an area where we can add huge value over a long, long period of time. So I think it's, a, it's just one of our assets, but it's a tremendous asset. And I think if you were to look at the main assets of Tullow t today, um, you know, we know Africa best, I wouldn't swap any of our main assets for anybody else's assets. I think we have some of the best assets on in the continent. You know, we've had um, mixed success in, in South America. Obviously, our first well in French Guiana was very successful. And then we've had a number of um, unsuccessful wells. That doesn't mean that French Guiana doesn't have oil. It does. It's got this ideas field. Um, and we've learned a lot, uh, Tullo as a company, uh, from the experience. It's the only basin that we've opened up that really hasn't delivered for us, but it's the only basin we're not operating. And, you know, it's a, it's a lesson for us go, in, go, going forward, the difference between an operating company and a development company. Um, so, you know, it may change our strategy going forward and slightly the way in that we uh, start work in joint ventures. Um, but I think, you know, we will find more oil in French Guiana. Um, and, you know, but we also will we'll drill dry holes. That's part of our business. And unless we drill dry holes, we're not going to find oil. So anyway, I'll hand you over to Ian, who will take you through um, the results. But I think what they said, the whole uh, um, trend or through the presentations will be showing you to Again, the strength of the balance sheet, um, the strength of our production assets and the quality of those assets, and the low-risk expiration upside that we have in the business, plus a very good selection 
of new basins that hopefully one of those will work over the next four or five years. Thank you. Thanks, Aidan, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm going to take you through the financials. Um, the uh, half-year results, uh, very pleased to uh, report uh, revenues and uh, gross profits up around 15%, uh, really on the back of increased Jubilee production. We get run through to operating profit and profit after tax uh, down, but really because, as highlighted on the, on the uh, slide here, the benefit of the profit on disposal from Uganda in the first half of 2012. Leaving our dividend unchanged at four pence per share. Um, capital investment very much in line with uh, expectations. And a number there I think very important, cash generated from operations, over a billion dollars, the first time in Tolo, our capital, um, our, sorry, cash generated from operations of over a billion dollars, so in, in excellent shape there. So overall, a, a good set of results, uh, really shows the underlying strength of the business, and I'll, I'll talk more about elements of these as we move through the slides. First of all, our, our net income, uh, starting on the left, net income first half 2012, on the right, uh, first half 2013. Small reduction regarding price, oil price about 5% lower, gas price about 14% higher overall net decrease. The benefit there of uh, Jubilee volumes in particular coming through, a couple hundred million dollars, um, partially offset by increased operating costs. Uh, some of those are around, around 60% related to Ghana, a lot of that to do with the increased volumes as well as increased workover costs, balance around mature fields. Other costs, um, DDNA, lift, um, kind of unders and over lifting, those sorts of things, admin costs, but overall the net, uh, just a small number there, and DDNA costs uh, per barrel, very much in line with last year. The two items really in the middle there, um, the, first of all, the, you know, the one-off gain on disposal from Uganda in the first half of 2012, and uh, we have a lower level of exploration write-offs uh, relative to uh, 2012, $275 million lower. Tax is also lower than the first half of 2012, uh, two principal reasons there. Higher taxes in Ghana, but much more, more offset, of course, by the $142 million provision we made for capital gains tax for Uganda in the first, uh, for, in, in the first half of 2012. So overall, underlying um, profits, if you like, you know, very much up um, you know, versus 2012. From a cash, uh, cash flow perspective, um, that increased uh, cash from operations, uh, really, if, if you actually look at the right-hand side there, 847 million capex, around $500 million of that is exploration. When you take that into account, plus the, the amounts we spent on uh, finance costs and dividends and tax, it, as we'll sort of hold that thought, if you like, for one of our next slides when we look at the model and how um, you know, we're effectively funding from operating cash flow our expiration costs and our ongoing sort of tax and dividends, et cetera. And then the balance, the $901 million drawdown in debt, went to fund the acquisition of Spring and the balance of the capital for DNO. Capital expenditure, our forecast remains unchanged for, for 2003, $2 billion. And not really too much more to say on that slide. The one I wanted to concentrate on really was this slide to talk about, you know, at the um, year end, we um, announced, if you like, our, or re reaffirmed our strategy and gave much more clarity on how we plan to uh, execute that strategy. I think the first thing to say on the left-hand side there, high, high margin production cash flow, our production uh, up some 15%, so we've got more, more high margin production coming in there, so we're delivering on that piece. You know, we're spending around a billion dollars um, on uh, exploration appraisal, and our cash flow of in excess of a billion dollars is really covering in the first half of the year. We can see that's already been delivered in, in the sense, as I showed you on the previous slide, how in our first half our production cash flow is covering our expiration costs and, and our costs and dividends, et cetera. Um, good success in expiration, as Aidan's saying, you know, it, it's, it's about really building and, and, and looking at it from a basin perspective and, uh, and, and really the, our success in Kenya has really uh, changed uh, you know, you know, the, the, the views of that, and, and particularly as we look forward to, uh, to, to de developing development options for that. So, so Kenya is the big news story in terms of the explanation spend. In terms of monetization, uh, we're making good progress on the 10 farm down. We obviously got the plan of development approved. Uh, we've discussed our plans with the government of Ghana. 
Uh, we've now, uh, along with our financial advisors, embarked upon early marketing with, with key uh, potential acquirers. Uh, those conversations have gone well. We're, we're putting together a data room as we speak. We expect the data room to be open in uh, late August, and we hope to uh, have bids in around end October with, uh, with finalization and due diligence through the first quarter of 2014. But as Aidan said, you know, it, it's, a, it's a big asset. It's in a stable country and one which is, is appealing to a number of companies. Um, on top of that, um, you know, we uh, uh, also, you know, the Bangladesh uh, sale has now been finalized, and uh, we've received initial bids which are under evaluation for our North Sea assets. Paul will talk a lot about, um, you know, where we are on uh, 10, which is, which is proceeding towards final contract towards the MOU and, and being finalized in Uganda, where we are in Uganda, but in particular, again, how we're already looking at development plans and options for, for, for Kenya. So really, you know, I think good progress and, 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 and very sort of, uh, uh, you know, ability to say that uh, over the course of the last, last six months, that this, you know, the strategy we set out in, in each component of that we're, we're delivering. In terms of uh, summary, as Aidan said, a strong balance sheet, improved revenues, operating cash flow and income. Um, you know, we've got debt facilities of $4 billion, uh, net debt of 1.7, and utilized capacity equally also 1.7. And, and that balance sheet is also, um, if, if you like, being uh, that capacity, if you like, has been strengthened in many ways by increasing operational cash flow and, and our proposed portfolio activity. As we've said, we have significant progress in Kenya, Ethiopia, and Uganda. We're in the process of executing our major development, the 10 project in Ghana. We've got new campaigns in Mauritania, Guinea, and Norway. And, you know, for um, from a CFO perspective, um, this success is very much, you know, I see uh, not as a, a funding issue, but actually a, a funding opportunity. You know, it's a great place to be. You know, I don't want to be sat here um, sort of accounting for lots of dry holes and projects that aren't going anywhere. You know, what we're doing here is developing projects and with that model that we've talked about, just like we're doing with 10 with the carry, you know, where we'll, we'll carry substantially our development costs, then we're looking always to work out what is the best way to fund this business, um, to, to monetize exploration success, and to add production for, for kind of low capital um, input. So, you know, in summary, it's our, our you know, business strong production ca and growing cash flow, continued portfolio high grading monetization. We select developing those key projects, tens and you know, the next best example, always looking to reduce that capital exposure in the development phase. You know, as Aidan says, our capital exposure in the development phase is much around the um, upstream part of it, you know, pipelines and certain refineries will be funded by others. And we also, as a company, continue to look at um, further debt diversification. Um, and we continue, of course, to uh, substantially uh, hedge our, uh, to protect ourselves from, uh, from lower oil prices through our hedge program. So with that, I'll hand over to, uh, to Paul from DNO Perspective. Thanks, Ian. Um, so another uh, kind of busy six months. Uh, I think I'll, I'll start off by saying, you know, again, importantly, we had a good six months from a kind of health and safety performance perspective. It's easy to kind of put that to one side, but we all know it's pretty fundamental to to what we do, um, and, and especially given some of the areas we're working in across East Africa and, and offshore West Africa where there, there are high risks. Um, so please say that we, the record again in the, the last six months has been been excellent. A lot of a lot of focus on kind of health and safety, and and, and importantly in East Africans our social performance in that area to have a smooth running of the the operations. Um, we we obviously mentioned I'll talk about ten major milestone achieved in terms of the approval of the the plan of development and, and moving that forward. Uh, the production portfolio has been very strong over the first half. We've got quite a bit of maintenance and, and activity, which will slow down second half production a bit, and I'll, I'll touch on that. Uh, and again, the portfolio management activity is important to us all, and they are, they are progressing. Um, however, I think the, the real excitement uh, lies in East Africa, and I'll, I'll certainly talk about that, you know, how, how we're now looking at Kenya and, East, and Uganda together and the potential already to move to development uh, in that area. In terms of production, um, first half very strong, almost 89,000 barrels a day, averaging for the first half. Uh, and Jubilee has been uh, stable around about 110 
constrained by our gas com compression uh, ability on the FPSO. Uh, in the second half, we're going to see a lot of activity on the FPSO. We're currently upgrading those gas compressors, uh, so that's a big work going on in the FPSO. Um, we've actually extended our shutdown. This will be the first planned shutdown we've done in Jubilee since we started up, so actually taking the decision to extend that out to around about 21 days from a previous estimate of just uh, around uh, kind of two weeks or a bit less, give us the time to do the proper maintenance and, and checks, etc. Um, and then thirdly, what, what's going to impact the second half, we just had a recent uh, failure in one of our water injection pumps. Um, so as we get the gas compression cleared, and we want to start ramping up, we'll, we'll probably control it for a little while. We, we had suspected some problems with the motors and the water injection pumps and had pre-ordered equipment, uh, which means the lead times are not particularly long. So there's a short-term impact uh, just in the third, fourth quarter until we get those uh, water injection pump motors out and, and the new ones put in. Uh, they're fairly big pieces of kit, about 12 tonnes, so uh, it's not, not a small job to change them, but uh, it's really... Um, uh, just, just, just facilities impact. So I mean, you, you can add all that together from a group perspective. We've, we've taken a kind of cautious approach of adjusting guidance to 84 to 88 for the full year, full year average. Uh, if we look kind of further out, um, we're working hard on the Jubilee uh, FPSO capacity.